Hey guys, Jordan here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to go out and start shooting real estate photography. So before I dive into it, a little bit about myself. I started shooting real estate photography almost 10 years ago. Now today, I'm more on the management side of things, but I wanna share the knowledge that I've acquired over the years in a super simple format so that you can get started shooting today if you want. All right, so first things first, you're gonna need some equipment. All right, so first off, you're gonna need a tripod and an SD card and a camera with a wide angle lens. Now, this is two options for you. This is actually the camera that I started shooting real estate photography with. This is the Canon 70D with a Canon 10 to 22 millimeter lens. This is a great photography camera for your entry level and you can get this for around 500 bucks for the entire setup. Now, if you want more of a modern setup, this is what we use today. This is the Sony a7 IV with the 16 to 35 power zoom lens. Now, this setup, up is a little bit more expensive at around $3,000. So depending on what your budget is, these are two great camera options. This one is great for both photography and video and will be great for years to come. But if you need to start on a budget, this is a great option for you. All right, now I wrote down some notes from a settings perspective. Now I recommend shooting brackets if you're just getting started. HDR shoot negative three, zero and plus three. And from an ISO perspective, I recommend shooting auto ISO from 100 to 400. Anything above 400, you might get a little bit too much noise. And then from an aperture setting, I recommend shooting 7.1. Now with these camera settings, what it's gonna do, the brackets, it's gonna shoot negative three, zero, and a plus three. And in the editing process, you're gonna take those three images, blend them together, get good details outside of windows, as well as good information on the interior of the property. All right, so something that's very important before you start shooting is prepping the home. Now there's a couple things you wanna look for. Go through the home, make sure all the lights are turned on, the fans are turned off, and that the toilet seats are down. Those are the main things that I'm looking for before I start shooting a property. Now, when you shoot a property, composition is key, and this is something that's gonna take a little bit of practice, but it's pretty easy. You want your real estate photos to be both level and straight, so straight ahead, so all the lines are perfectly straight up and down. And you also wanna control your tripod height. You don't want it too high or too low, Typically, from a rule of thumb for me, you wanna see a little bit more flooring than ceiling. And lastly, let me talk about the shot list. I recommend taking three pictures of the front and then shooting uh, four to five photos of the kitchen. You get three to five on main living areas. Then the master bedroom and bath, which will shoot um, three to four of those. And then secondary bedrooms and bathrooms, two to three is usually sufficient. And then once you're finished with the interior, go out back, usually four to five photos of the backyard starting at the porch and then working your way around. So once you get back to your computer, make sure you transfer all your raw images to your computer, load them up in Lightroom, and first things first, you'll wanna select all your images, right click, go to stacking, and auto stack by capture time. Typically three seconds is gonna be sufficient to stack all your images. All right, so once you have all your photos stacked into stacks of three, you'll wanna right click, go to photo merge, and then select HDR. And what that's gonna do is gonna take all three of those images and blend them together and spit out an HDR image. So then you take that HDR image and you edit to your liking. So once you're done editing, you'll just export them. And I typically recommend labeling your folder, the property address, and as well as the file names to the street name of that property. All right, so once you've exported your images, just deliver them to your customers, and that's it, you're done. Now, from a real estate photography perspective, there is so much opportunity out there. You can hop on Zillow and just see how many properties are going for sale each and every day in your area. You can reach out to real estate agents and find listings relatively easy online. You just gotta be willing to put in the work 
to build your client base. What's so great about real estate photography is that once you have your a, a good client and you deliver a great customer experience, those customers will use you over and over you again for their listings that come up. So real estate photography is a great business opportunity today and for many years to come. If you guys have any additional questions about the business outside of what I've taught you here on this short video, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you got value out of this video, hit the like button and we'll see you guys on the next one.